I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let me share something with you today. Whatever you're going through, God wants to bring you through. But you have to be in the right place to be brought through. Today is Palm Sunday. And when he came riding into Jerusalem on that coat, we need to understand something. He was saying to the world, I am the king. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and even lift them up, ye everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. We've come today because we want to lift the name of Jesus. We bless you today, those of you that are in attendance. We bless those of you that are watching it at home. We pray that you would come by and share with us in person. Somebody say, in person. Amen. And we love you. Now, Lord, we bless you and thank you. We magnify and adore you. There's no one else that we can call on that can hear our prayers and answer our prayers. We pray that we would understand that no is an answer that only means that we have to develop to get a yes. So now, Lord, we praise you in the name of Jesus for the praise team, the band, for ushers, deacons, trustees, officers, all of our members, and we pray your blessings upon us. And now may you get the praise, the honor, and the glory that you deserve for being God all by yourself. There's none higher than you, so we search all over, but we can't find anybody but you. Now, bless us, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. I'm T. Ellsworth Gant II. Pastor of Second Birth Church here in Riverside, California. We welcome you to our worship service. Come on, praise team. Let's get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cry out, Hosanna. Hallelujah. Hosanna. He saves now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless his name. We Glory praise his name. We Jesus. ask that you join us this morning. Let's be one big choir. Crying out, Hosanna, this morning. He truly is worthy. He truly is holy. He truly is faithful, and we love him. Hallelujah. Come on. Everybody can participate. Yeah. He truly wants to hear you sing. Not just us. He wants to hear you sing. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You might as well go on and get a dance in your spirit. You put your clothes on this morning, didn't you? All right.
atmosphere. That's why we come up here. We get we come up here to sing praises to the most high God. We want to set the atmosphere and the tone like it feels like heaven in the room. Hallelujah. We're ready. Make some noise. Reflections 
just continue to stand. I'm, I'm happy today to present my great nephew, Zion Jenkins. He's going to come with this presentation. If he goes over, he's not related to me. <laughs> All right, good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. All right, so today, today for our Black History Reflections, I'm going to be talking about two very important figures in our history. All right, and that first person is going to be Mae Jemison. And if you didn't know, she's from Decatur, Alabama. She's the first African American woman to journey into space. Okay. And despite facing severe racial discrimination throughout her life, uh, she persevered, excelling in her education, her career, getting degrees from Stanford and Cornell, top notch institutions. Um, she's not only a NASA astronaut, she's a doctor and an engineer. Uh, she's like that. Um, she, <laughs> she, she made significant contributions to science and space exploration, including her involvement in the 100-year uh, Starship program, which aims to make human space travel to another star possible within the next 100 years. Um, her achievements have earned her a place in the National Women's Hall of Fame and the International Space Hall of Fame, so she submitted her legacy for a long time from now. Um, the next person I'm going to be talking about is Lewis Hamilton. Now, he's from England. All, across, all the way across the sea. Um, and he's the first black Formula One driver and the only black Formula One driver. Yeah. All right? Now, obviously, he encountered many, much racial discrimination on and off the track. Um, but he's arguably the best to do it. I mean, he's yeah. won the most world championships. Yeah. He has the most wins in any motorsport history. Um, so he's Michael Jordan in a race car. <laughs> um, Beyond his achievements in motorsport, Hamilton has also used his platform to advocate for diversity and inclusion, um, including diversity in uh, engineering and, of course, motorsport. He also developed the Hamilton Commission, which aimed at addressing systemic issues um, within the industry. So his relentless pursuits and excellence to commit, or his excellence and commitment to driving positive change has inspired millions. Um, now, both Jemison and Hamilton, uh, Hamilton's journeys are characterized by their resilience, their perseverance, and their steadfast commitment to excellence in the face of adversity, because despite the racial discrimination they had, they still found a way to not be limited by societal expectations, right? Now, before I step down from here, there's one thing I want you to think of um, when you think of these people, when you ever find yourself in a tough situation, a tough challenge. Um, it's a very simple Bible verse. Everybody should know it. Um, it's Philippians 4.13, all right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, so thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For it's only by the grace of God that we are here today. The Lord is good. Amen. Thank the Lord for another week. Danger seen in us seen. His, his promises are forever, forever towards us in his grace. So today we're going to be reading from Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help, I said my help, comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the doers of his holy word. Let's go to the Lord to the Lord in prayer. 
Lord. Lord God, we come before you this morning. Recognize you as God and God all by yourself. How great you are. We just thank you this morning because you've been mighty good to us, Lord. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Oh, Lord, you kept us. You brought us from a mighty long way. And we're so grateful. We love you today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for commanding your love toward us while we were yet sinners that you died on that rugged cross. So we say thank you this morning for your life. And through your life, we live and move and have our being. So we just give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Now we ask the Lord to forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. Sins of omission and sins of commission. Prop us up on every leaning side, Lord. Strip us where we're weak and build us up where we're torn down. Now, Master, Lord, we pray that you would bless the past, uh, bless sister, the preacher this, uh, this morning, that you would touch her in a special way, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray don't let your word fall upon death ears today, Heavenly Father. We know that you're able today, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. And we be so careful to bless your name. We ask all these blessings. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And let the church say, Amen. 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 It's now time for tithes and offering. Amen. Are we ready for the tithes and offering? I can't hear you. Are we ready for the tithes and offering? All right, you can give by numerous ways. First, you can go to www.secondbirthchurch.org or you can text GIVE to 951-987-5285 or you can ZAIL 951-455-5585. Or you could just come by the, the church. We'd love to have you here and worship and enjoy the worship experience with us. So as we prepare for our declaration, please elevate your, your tithes and your offering. I'm out of debt. My needs are met. I have much more to place in the store. I sow to make it so. And if it has to be so, I will continue to sow. Receive these now my tithes and offering and bless according to your word. Open up a window, pour out a blessing that I might not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church family. Um, on April 6th, uh, we'll be having a Second Birth Church Youth and Youth Adult Fun Day at Bull Row. We'll be going bowling at 5 p.m. And for more information and to RSVP by April 2nd, please see SISCAT, uh, Brother Carlton, or Elder Payne. And it's $25 per child. Thank you. Look at somebody and say, the only way I made it through was the hand of the Lord was on me. Amen. All my life. Look back over your life. His hand is on you. Amen. Amen. You know the song. I wish you would just put your hands together and let's sing it together. One big choir in this place. You at home, put your hands together. It's the hand of the Lord that's upon me. I wish I could get two or three people to just get up. How y'all right? I want to go with y'all. There we go. Hey. No goodness of my own, but it's the hand of the Lord that's upon me. Can I get a witness? It's no goodness of my own. You know what it is? It's the hand of the Lord that's upon me. You can sing it with us. Everybody say, It's no goodness of my own. Come on, I can hear you, but what? It's the hand of the Lord. Everybody in the room, let's say it. Come on. It's no goodness of my own. But it's the hand of the Lord. It's the hand of the Lord that's upon me. Can we say, oh?
the hand of the Lord. It's the hand of the Lord that's upon me. Come on, lift your voice all over the room. Oh, 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 oh. It's the hand of the Lord that's upon me. Anybody got this testimony? I'm so thankful. Come on. I'm so thankful that I'm here. I really mean that this morning. It's the, it's the hand of the Lord.
Come on, say it with me. Oh, yes, I do. I was in a horrible place, but God lifted me. Anybody ever been sick in your body? And he laid his hand. 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 I didn't lose my mind. Oh, yes, oh, yes, I know. Because the Lord laid his hand. but you know you're special <laughs> and I know I'm special I know that I'm a child of the king and I know that I'm one of his favorite a uh, special one because I've been under his leadership for 18 years <laughs> so pastor I want to thank you for being my friend my mentor my teacher and my pastor. I want to thank my ministers, my brothers and sisters in the ministry with me. I thank you for your support and for your prayers. I want to thank my lovely, lovely husband. I want him to stand because most of you won't know him. He's so quiet and he stay to himself. Stand up, Dave. This is Dave Coleman. And our beautiful daughter, I don't know why you're up in the balcony all by yourself, but see, she get that after him. You know, that introvert personality, because you know she didn't get it from me. <laughs> okay, that's Brittany up in the balcony. <laughs> and I want to thank my second birth family. Amen. Thank you for coming out into the sanctuary. Amen. I love coming into the house of the Lord. That's why I said... You know that I'm glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. Because it's just, it's just, you know, this is the holy place. 
You're standing on holy ground when you come into the house of the Lord. But I don't want to forget those who are watching online. Thank you very much. I especially want to say hello to my sister Vi, who's down in Louisiana, because I know she's watching and praying, and the rest of my family who's watching. So with that, I want to go into prayer. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I know it's a special privilege, and I don't take it for granted. I thank you for using me as your instrument to tell the redemptive story. And I promise, Lord, I promise to give you the glory because you are the one who paid the price. Father God, I thank you that your grace and your mercy are new every morning. I thank you that you woke us up with health and strength and a sound mind. I thank you that you gave us traveling grace to make it here, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for the word that you left for us to stand on. Father God, I don't take it for granted, the sacrifice that you made for us way back on Calvary. And I thank you and I give you the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. Now you may stand as I read our text for today. Our text is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 7 through 9. And it reads, you know what, I, I, yes, yes, it's chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 7 through 9. And it reads, the Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people in regard to all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Like all the deeds which they have done since the day that I brought them up from Egypt, even to this day, in that they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they are doing to you also. Now listen, listen to their voice. However, you shall solemnly warn them and tell them of the procedure of the king who will reign over them. You may be seated. My subject for today is take me to the king. Take me to the king. As Pastor has said, this is Palm Sunday. This day commemorates Christ's triumphant entrance into Jerusalem more than 2,000 years ago. Based on the prophetic promise, the people of Israel was expecting a courageous king to arrive and save them from the Roman Empire. Therefore, they were excited when they heard their king had arrived. According to the gospel, Jesus entered Jerusalem riding a young donkey. And they, the people, they were excited. And, they re, and he received lavish praise as the people threw clothes and palm branches in front of him as a sign of praise and honor. Now, palm branches, as you can see, I brought I, you some palm branches. And, you know, we're living in California. We get to see palm branches all the time. And we just think of them as a uh, fun time, you know, sunshine, state where we can have lots of fun. But how many of you really, really think of what the palms really means? Yeah. Palm branches are recognized as symbol of peace and victory. They are used to this day in remembrance on what happened on that day. But to understand the significance of Palm Sunday, remember I said the people of Israel was expecting the king to save them from all the turmoils that they were going through. But what they failed to realize is that they had already been introduced to a king at his birth. But they rejected him because they wanted earthly kings. They wanted kings like the surrounding nations of them. And so 
God gave them what they wanted. He allowed them to have kings. But guess what? These kings led them into bondage and eventually caused their nations to be destroyed. <clears throat> so when you read the Old Testament, and God bless you if you are reading the Old Testament, <laughs> word to the wise, don't get discouraged. When you see them doing the same thing over and over again, when you see all the bad things that happen, when you see how many sacrifices you have to make personally, and when you see how many times they had different kings and the kings kept doing things over and over. Don't get discouraged. Continue to read the Old Testament because you know what? There's so much that was happening back there that's happening today. We, we're still doing the same thing over and over. We're not following the, the commands. We read them, we know them, and we still do our thing. So don't get discouraged. Just keep on reading. And as you read the Old Testament, you'll see that Israel had several kings. Some of them were good kings, and they followed the commandments of the Lord. And, but the majority of them were bad kings, and they worshiped idols. And they led the people to worship idols. And they did evil things. And they destroyed the temple of the Lord over and over again. If you read in the Old Testament how Solomon had built this beautiful temp temple uh, for God. And, and I, I was just said, oh, I wish I could just have seen that temple. But the kings kept coming in the, between the good and the bad. And they kept rebuilding the temple and they kept destroying the temple. But, you know, all of that happened for a reason. So after several failed rulerships of the kings and numerous trials and tribulation, God decided to fulfill the prophecy of 1 Samuel 16 and 1. This is when David was chosen to be the king. Now, from the royal line of David's family, according to all four gospels of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it said the king of the Jews, the true king of the Jews, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was identified. Now, even though Jesus didn't fit the description of a mighty king when he rode into Jerusalem on that young donkey, the government officials still marked him and plotted to kill him. As a result, people changed their perception and their allegiance to Jesus. This tells you how quickly people's commitments can change. Look what happened to our Lord. One day, Jesus was welcomed into Jerusalem as a king, as a hero. With thousands shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, and singing his praises. But what? Four days later, he was arrested and treated like a criminal. He was tortured. Many who cheered him on the day he arrived was now calling for his death. This led Jesus to be crucified in the most painful and horrible way on Resurrection Sunday. This is why the Bible said he was bruised for our iniquity. The events that happened on Palm Sunday should be an indication that anyone's lives can change dramatically. A change in perception can cause others to reject you, so don't get it twisted. One day you can be popular, and one day you can be nothing, okay? Someone can put something out on social media about you that could, you know, lift you up and make you seem real important. Then you start getting the feedback from others that can bring you right down to nothing, okay? So... A change in per perception can cause people to reject you, just like they rejected the king of glory. Right. To expound on this, our text today is going to center around the presence, the promise, and the purpose of our king. Right. And we're going to start with the presence, okay? First, we have to acknowledge the king's presence. Yes. When we read and believe the word of God, we are, are acknowledging him. Because John 1 and 1 say, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Then the Bible tells us that we have to hide the word in our hearts. We have to teach it to our children. We have to teach it to them when we get up, when we go out, when we lie down, 
and when we uh, rise again. It said, if necessary, write the words on your hand, even on your forehead. As long as you acknowledge them. And then when you acknowledge the word, you acquire the king's presence by continuously reading and studying and sharing the word. And the next thing you want to do then is to advance the knowledge of the king. You advance the knowledge of the king by leading by example. So you want to make sure that your children see that you walk the talk. You want to read the Bible to them and with them. You want to tell them about your experience and what it means to you. You want to bring your children to church. Don't just drop them off. Get them involved in children's church and Sunday school. This will enable you to train up a child the way he should go. And the Bible said that when he will old, he won't depart for it. So after you acknowledge the king's presence and advance the knowledge, then you want to avoid receiving and sharing false information. Be careful not to fall into the latest religious movement or accept false teaching. Don't be tricked by overly dramatic presentations. <laughs> Did you see that rebuttal that was made by the junior uh, senator from Alabama after the president's uh, uh, State of the Union address? Did you see it? Did you see the acting? Now, but not only was she presenting false information through her, her dramatization, but she wanted to make everybody think that families still sit around the kitchen table and talk about critical issues and family issues, right? Really? Now, everybody know that adult, adults and children get their information from social media, Facebook, TikTok, or whatever, and, and for the adults mostly for, for, for TV, from TV, not sitting around the kitchen table. But some parents also use technical devices as teaching tools and babysitters. Now, don't get me wrong. As someone who's worked in IT for several years, I don't have anything wrong. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with using technical devices. However, technology, especially artificial intelligence, should not replace the parental responsibility of teaching and sharing the word of God. Instead of training a child up in the way it should go these days, we have several unchurched generations. Now, what I mean by that, we have multiple family members, adults and children, who don't go to church. We don't have big mama them anymore who would take the time and teach us and show us, you know? Um, so as a result, no more big mom, no more big mom. So as a result, um, many people don't acknowledge the birth of Christ as being the king. During Christmas time, they don't know that Jesus is the reason for the season. Many people don't understand the creation or they don't believe in the theory of the creation. So you hear them saying, I'll send my thoughts to, to out to the universe or the universe granted this or granted that do they not know that the god we serve created the universe they don't know the significance of resurrection sunday that's why they call it easter because they don't know the sacrifice that he made for us on that day you know and, and the reason they don't know this is because they fail to adhere to the king's promise. This is our second point. To adhere to our king's promise, we have to acquire it and understand it. Now, depending on which study you're reading, there are over 8,000 promises in the Bible. Most of them are from God to man. There are some from God the Father to his son, Jesus, and there are some from man to God. But would you believe there are even promises from Satan to man? And many people fall for them. Okay? To adhere to the promises of God, we have to read them carefully. 
and ask the Holy Spirit to give us a complete understanding yes. to help us determine if the promises are unconditional or conditional. Right, right. Conditional promises mean it requires action on our part. Yes. For example, you probably read 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 and 15 several times. But don't take my word for it. I want you to turn to it. If you don't turn to it now, turn to it when you get home. I'm going to read it for you right now. And I'm going to point out the conditional promises that are necessary for God to give us the five promises that he promised in these two verses. It says, and my people who are called by my name must humble themselves pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. There's four conditions here that we must meet. Then Jesus said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. And then what I tell you almost every time I stand before you, he said, my eyes will be open and my ears will be attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Yeah. You want your prayers to be answered? Yeah. You got to humble yourself before the Lord. You have to pray and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. You have to ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, those known and those unknown. Because Psalm 66 and 18 said, unless you ask forgiveness for your iniquities, that your prayers would be in vain. I don't know about you, but I can't afford to allow one prayer to be in vain. That's why I start my prayers off, Lord, saying, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. If I said anything wrong, forgive me. If I done anything wrong, forgive me. Oh, hallelujah. Because once, once we uh, adhere to God's promises, then we have to allow God's will to be done. Many become angry with God and question his power when their prayers are not answered the way they expected. Some leave the church. Some turn away from God completely. Others lose hope and faith in God when scriptures are unfulfilled according to their understanding. For example, Matthew 17 and 20 is one of my favorite scriptures. It said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing, nothing will be impossible for you. I know I have faith the size of a mustard seed, at least the size of a mustard seed. So when I pray this prayer, and I pray this prayer often, but you know what? Sometimes it didn't turn out the way I had hoped. And I was disappointed. But I didn't lose my faith because I know that God was still in control. But yet at times like these, Satan looks for the opportunity to devour those who have weak faith. He feels he can trick us because we are vulnerable at that time. So during these weak, weak moments, we must ask, or some may ask, does God really love me? Why didn't he answer my prayer? The question may be endless, and, and you may have so many questions. You know why? Because Satan is trying to confuse you and to cause you to doubt your relationship with God. But if you have a personal relationship with the king, if you have acknowledged his presence, if you had adhered to his promise, you won't allow Satan to instill doubt or in your mind. So I'm here today to tell you if you or someone you know are hurting, or you're discouraged, your faith has been weakened. Listen to the voice of God through his word. Don't be judgmental. Instead, try to encourage them instead of jumping on the defense. Remind them that prayers are answered. I have to remind myself all my prayers are answered. 
The answers may be yes, no, not now. It's based on what is best for us according to the will of God. Because God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. So instead of judging, we have to assert the word of God. As Samuel warned the people of Israel, I'm here to warn you. Do not turn to false teachers when you become discouraged or when you experience church hurt. Church hurt. Y'all know what church hurt is? I think everybody in here has experienced some form of church hurt. It may have been intentional. It may have been unintentional. But you will experience it because you know what? The church, there is no perfect church. There are no perfect people. So we all make mistakes. So we can't allow church hurt and discouragement to cause us to reject the king of glory. Chelsea Stapleton, my young friend here, and I miss my friend Deborah. But anyway, we often have lunch after church. And Chelsea made this profound statement one day. She said, it never ceases me to it never ceases to amaze me why people are so quick to leave the church when someone offends them. Yet, if someone offends them on their job, they don't quit their job. <laughs> I said, wow, that's a, that's a profound statement coming from a young woman. So we have to understand we got to toughen up our skin and know that instead of being discouraged and turn away, that's when we need to really get more involved in the church and in the word and try to set the right example. Because you know what? As heirs to the king, we must learn to trust in the Lord and not to lean to our own understanding. We must allow him to direct our step. Once we have acknowledged the king present, adhere to his promise, then we have to, in our third point, Accept the king's purpose. To accept his purpose, we got to attain the direction and the instructions from God. Again, that's by reading the word of God, because 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17 said, All scriptures are inspired by God, profitable for teaching, reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that man of God may be adequate. Uh, in other words, so that we may be equipped for good works. So unlike the Israelites who kept making the same mistake over and over again and expecting a different outcome, we have to follow the word of God. Ask the Holy Spirit to open our mind to understand and apply the word. Then we will be able to appreciate the benefits we have as heirs of the king. As you go through the storm of life, know that everything is going to be all right. You know how I know that? Because in Isaiah 41 and 10, he told me, don't be afraid, because I'm with you. Do not look anxiously around you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Surely, surely, I will uplift you with my righteous right hand. Now, the heartaches that my family and I recently experienced took my breath away. And as, a, as an evangelist, you know, I try to be strong for my nieces and nephews, and, 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 I, and I try to share the word with them. But when the Lord took my brother, who was just a year older than me, that floored me. It just floored me. I said, Lord, we, we, we've been through two major losses in less than three months, and now you have taken my brother? who's just a year older than me, am I next? You know, that's when Satan started putting those doubts in your mind. Lord, haven't I served you? Lord, haven't I worshipped you? Lord, hasn't, haven't I been a witness for you? Lord, and the Lord said, yes. Uh, yes, you've been all of that. And that's why you can assure your place in the kingdom of God. So the Lord sent me to tell you today, he is still king. He is still my king. 
He is not only the king of the Jews, but he is the king to anyone who accepts him as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I want you to take a moment and answer this question. Since Jesus gave his life for you, what more could he have done to prove that he loved you? I want to tell you today, whatever you fear, whatever you're facing, God will give you the grace and the strength to handle it. As you go through your storm, God will give you what you need to make it through. When you go through your season of sorrow, I am a witness. God will use the time to strengthen your faith. If you trust him, you will realize that on the other side of through, there's a blessing waiting for you. You got to remember that your test will be your testimony. That's why I am thankful for the sacrifice he made for me on Calvary. I've come to remind you that the king has arrived and his offering, he's offering the greatest gift you could ever receive for free because he has already paid the price. The gift of salvation and eternal life are yours if you simply confess that Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross for our sins. And then on the third day, God raised him. If you believe this according to Romans 10 and 9, you shall be saved. Believe me when I tell you, there is no other king who offers love and protection like the king of glory. Who is the king of glory? <laughs> the Lord, strong and mighty. The, the, the Lord, mighty in battle. So I want you to lift up your hands, oh ye saints. <laughs> lift up your hands and welcome the king. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. Jesus Christ, our Savior, he is the king of glory. That's why I say, as the songwriter says, when I'm sick, take me to the king. When I'm afraid, take me to the king. When I'm in trouble, take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces, but I need you to take me to the king. And when I get there, leave me all alone to gaze upon his glory, to sing to him this song. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. Won't you join me? Stand on holy ground. Welcome the king. Lift up your hands, oh ye saints. <laughs> Lift up your hands and welcome the king of glory. I want you to shout hallelujah. Can you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah is the highest praise. That's why we can, on this Palm Sunday, welcome the king of glory. Because he is in this place. Welcome the king of glory. Because he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Take me to the king.
Come on, let's give God some praise in the house today. Thanks to Sarah so much, Evangelist Coleman, for this reminder uh, that indeed we have access to the King. And as we offer Christ to you this morning, we're going to ask that you consider what the Evangelist has poured out her heart today to remind us of. Uh, because if you're going to come to the King, you have to acknowledge there is a King. I know it's hard to do sometimes in the modern world. We got to acknowledge there is a king. And once you acknowledge him, then we have to adhere to his promises. They're not our promises. We don't get to negotiate and make them our own, but we have to adhere to what he has promised. And then finally, we accept his purpose for our lives and his purpose for his kingdom. Uh, you're going to accept somebody's purpose anyway, so you might as well accept the purpose of the eternal righteous king. And so I would that all the saints would be praying. And if you feel something tugging in your heart now, we call that the Holy Spirit. He's speaking to you now and encouraging you to make a decision to follow after the Lord Jesus Christ. We offer Christ to you today and ask you to consider this way of living. It's a different way. It's not a way that's always easy, but life isn't always easy. But it's different when you have the king that you're following after, when the king is in your life, when the king is the one that's providing for you. And so we thank God for all of you here and offer this opportunity for you to know the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to ask for everybody to stand now, and we are grateful for what has come before us today by way of the word of God. And at any time, whether it be now or if you're online, you want to show some sign or you want to come up afterwards, and however you feel led by God, to make a response to the word, we ask you to make that consideration now. And so as we prepare to leave this place, uh, we want to be reminded that next week is Resurrection Sunday. Somebody ought to give God some praise in this house. So we will be here next Sunday morning at 5.30 in the morning. Five th Everybody say 5.30. Come on, y'all looking funny. If it was, y'all don't, they, they don't sense him being up there. Come on, everybody say 530. That's right, yes. And you know, to make it stick in the mind, you got to say one more time. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, say, neighbor, Jesus got up early. So we getting up early. Yeah, 530. Yeah, we going to get up. Uh, just like our Savior got up. Amen. So we, come on, give God some praise. Y'all unsettled. Give God some praise. Amen. At yeah, 5.30 in the morning and mess somebody up, yes. And we're excited and we look forward to worshiping on next Sunday morning at 5.30. Come on, let's bow our heads now and let us pray. God, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your kindness. We're grateful for this word that has gone forth. And we pray now that you would forever allow us to be in your presence. God, we pray now that you prepare us as we go out into the harsh world to continue to have access to you by following what you have promised and not being afraid to stand because when you stand for us, no one can stand against us. Father, please bless us now. Keep us in your care. We ask that you would do it now. Now the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, we pray, God, that it would rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all the people of God said amen.